Um, so uh, yesterday we heard, heard a lot about uh, almost cumulative manifolds, and I will continue uh, that story a little bit further. Um, so yesterday we've seen an almost cumulative manifold, mostly being um, uh, uh, the canonical spectral triple, and then we take, which is a commutative manifold, and we take the tensor product with some finite dimensional spectral triple. Um, and then we saw uh, that these, uh, that using this almost commutative manifold, uh, we can do gauge theories. Um, so I want to do the same thing today, but if you use this uh, product that I just mentioned, um, you always get uh, a trivial gauge theory in the sense that the corresponding trip of a principal fiber bundle is always globally trivial. So what I want to do today is how to adjust this, um, how to adjust the spectral triple uh, such that we can also allow, uh, that it also allows globally non-trivial gauge theories. So today my talk, uh, when I talk about a gauge theory, I will mean a principal fiber bundle, which I will abbreviate to PFB, with a structure group, uh, and I will call this structure group uh, GF. I will explain the notation later, but this is just a, 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 well, a legal root. Um, oh, yeah, and I will call this a uh, structure group, not gauge group. I will save the... Um, the notion of gauge group for something else. Uh, namely, uh, for the gauge group, uh, I will just mean all the uh, gauge transformations. So all the uh, uh, bundle isomorphisms from P to itself, which um, are, uh, which leave the space part invariant. So which, so transformations over M, which intertwine the, of which commute with the right action of P. So I will call this gauge group GP, and it's a well-known fact, oh, maybe that this can be, that this is isomorphic to the sections of the uh, adjoint bundle of P, where the adjoint bundle of P is the associated uh, group bundle where uh, the group GF acts on itself in the adjoint, uh, with the adjoint action or by conjugation, if you like. Um, oh yeah, of course, the associated bundles uh, will contain the particle content and um, connections on P. Correspond to gauge potential. So this is more or less a dictionary of what, a, of, uh, what I mean by gauge theory. Also, there is, um, we've seen yesterday, there is a, um, if you have a gauge theory, you want to write down an action, but I won't be talking about that because, um, well, uh, I want to focus on uh, the non-trivial structure here. And uh, with the action, nothing really changes if you write down the spectral action. Um, OK. Um, so, uh, so, so we have seen some examples yesterday. I will recall them very briefly. Of these almost commutative manifolds, so we have a space part, which is just the... Oh, and let me say now that M is always a compact spin manifold. And let me also assume that its uh, dimension is even. This is not always necessary to assume, but in some part, well, it's still, and after all, we're, in the end, we are interested in um, dimension uh, four. So, uh, so this will be my uh, Dirac operator on uh, my spin Dirac operator. We can have some real structure and grading. So this is the space part. 
and then we tensor it over C with a finite dimensional special triple. And well, this is a spectral triple again, or real even spectral triple, both of them are. And then we can, um, oh yeah, let me <coughs> write down the product. So if we take this product, the product spectral triple, So this is just uh, the trivial uh, factor bundle with fiber HF. Let me okay, and here we just have the Same for the grading, but let me just ignore that. So this is our this is the product spectral triple, and now we can do gauge theory. Um, so we have a notion of the gauge group. Oh yeah, so uh, this is a Clifford multiplication. So you get this one form from the D, the exterior derivative, and then you. Oh yes, yes. So. Okay, good that you mentioned it. Um, later on, we will mostly, when we discuss the gauge group, we will forget about the F and uh, uh, exterior derivative. Uh, so this is the connection on, uh, let's say, trivial connection on the trivial bundle uh, M time of HF times M. And then you take the Clifford. All right. Oh, yeah, and I will denote this by... So finite times this space bar. All right. Let me see what's the best. Hmm. Where are we going? Um. Oh yeah, and I should mention that uh, we were today we work over C, so all algebras will be complex algebras. Um, so what about the gauge group? So what we do is that the uh, gauge symmetries in this uh, almost commuted manifold are generated by the uh, unitaries of uh, of the algebra and they act on our on the Hilbert space by, uh, well, applying this operator. And, um, but since everything is, uh, so, uh, so if we see everything as trivial bundles and everything is uh, just X fiber wise, so actually in each, so fiber wise we have, uh, so in just So fiber-wise, such an element is just a unitary element of the algebra. <coughs> and then it just acts in this fashion on, let's say, the, because it's only, uh, well, let's just, because this, because u is uh, the, um, so it's a function, unitary function uh, for the algebra, trivial algebra bundle with fiber AF only acts on the uh, HF bar, not on the S bar. So we can just uh, view this as acting on HF fiber wise. Um, so these are the unitaries that generate the, uh, the gauge group, but uh, this map has a kernel. So there, is, there are some transformation here that, uh, well, just, Act trivially on the Hilbert space, 
so I don't want them to include them in my gauge group. Um, so we have to take uh, the kernel, and this is what I will call GF. So these will be the same GF that I wrote over there. Um, And this is, uh, so this is, uh, and if I call this map uh, phi, for instance, then this will be just this. So this is what I will, this is what I will mean by, uh, this is uh, what I will take to be uh, my gauge group. Yes, so a, a complex uh, algebra. So, uh, com so this will mean a complex, real, even uh, spectral triple. Yes. Yes, more or less we have, uh, and this will actually be uh, important in one of the proofs um, in the paper. I won't do that today, but uh, it's simple. Yeah, the specific form makes some. Um, so yeah, so this will be our uh, structure group, this GF. Um, yeah, so and uh, so this is what I want to say about uh, the gauge group. Then. I Sorry? Yes, yes, I will come to that later. <laughs> um, so, well, we've seen, uh, so to give an example and to, uh, well, to tell you what I uh, want to say later, is so we have an example, we've already seen it yesterday. Um, When we take, so this is uh, pure Yang Mills. If we take the um, AF and HF to be the M by M matrices, where the algebra, well, M by M matrix acts on itself from the left by um, multiplication, and GF is star operation. Um, well, you can write down your spectral triple, and what you will find, because uh, in this situation, if u is a unitary element, then, oh, let me just call this uh, un, then this will just be, uh, so u will then, so the gauge group, or the unitaries, will then act on the m by m, m, by m matrices just by adjoint action. So this means that gf is not un, not g, will be PSUN, so defining, if you define the kernel then, or just look at the image, then you get PSUN. Um, well, you can do the inner fluctuations. And the inner fluctuations will, um, yeah, will give you, basically will generate uh, all SUN gauge potentials. So this is now the Lie algebra. And it will generate gauge potentials on uh, uh, th they will generate gauge potentials on a trivial bundle. So what you, if you in the fluctuate, then what you get is SUN valued uh, one forms, basically. And those SUN valued one forms determine gauge potential on a trivial principal bundle. So we've seen yesterday, we talked, we've seen that if you do the spectral action uh, applied to this uh, spectral triple, 
uh, what you get is the uh, you get if you expand you use the expansion, then uh, you get Einstein Hilbert and you get the Yamil's action. So, um, um, well, this was already this all well, this uh, probably familiar with that. So, what we want to do today, or what I would like to do today, is to uh, extend this to the non-trivial, or to the globally non-trivial case. So. Um, so one of the questions is, um, can we write down a spectral triple uh, for, so can we do the same thing but then for globally non-trivial uh, gauge theory? And, um, well, some of the questions is, so what about uh, the gauge group? So if we look at this, uh, these gauge groups, so the, so the unitary element of the algebra under this map, what do we uh, get? What about the inner fluctuations? Do they still generate the, um, connect do they still generate uh, connections on our uh, bundle? And, um, one other thing is, and um, we're not, uh, so this is uh, still in progress, we are in view, um, is that um, one of the questions is, if we know the spectral triple, can we then somehow reconstruct, and we do not know the principal fiber bundle, can we somehow get the principal fiber bundle from the spectral triple? So this is, a, so uh, let me call this a construction of P from uh, the spectral triple. And I will also, uh, is can we find algebraic conditions uh, for uh, such a spectral triple? So can we find, uh, can we find conditions on a spectral triple that we know that we can, that there is such a, that it comes from, yeah, such a, a gauge theory with a principal fiber bundle? So these are the questions I would like to answer. Uh, I was focused on the, uh, on the first three, and here I will also say something about, but this is still, uh, it's, we haven't reached the final conclusion yet, but still, uh, I would like to say something about it. Um, so, other questions? All right, let me then. Uh, yeah. So basically what we would like to do now is that you, um, so to extend the finite spectral triple that we had, we want to, we want to have something globally non-trivial, but um, well if we look fiber-wise, then um, what we expect to see is just the same, it's just the finite spectral triple, only globally it's not. So. Um, let me put, um, for the moment, um, let me forget about, uh, the F for the moment. Oh, well, no, let me, let's not do that. Um, so locally we expect to, we expect to find the, um, finite spectral triple again. So what we, um, so as a starting point, we take, uh, the following, and this is a definition, um, we call them principal modules. So we define a principal module um, to be, I will use the following notation. Um, so P is now um, a 
principal fiber bundle, structure group. GF again, where GF is as it was before. Um, and so the following form. So we have the algebra. Oh yeah, so um, basically the reason why you get a, a trivial principal bundle is because you took all the bundles uh, but still somewhere, no, because you took the, so by taking this finite, just taking this product of the finite spectral triple, you basically get, uh, yeah, trivial bundles. So what we do now is we replace the algebra So um, here we have the associated bundle, which is an algebra bundle, and we take the smooth sections. So this is an algebra. It's even oh, sorry, it's a star algebra because A F is also in out as a star structure, which is preserved by the action of by our structure group. And then um, we have some. And then we also have some uh, operators, some real structure, and some grading, if you'd like. And these all satisfy some uh, condition. Um, so for instance, uh, well, if you want to have uh, so plus some conditions, I won't specify them. It's pretty straightforward. It's basically uh, repeating the conditions for a real and even spectral triple, although this is not uh, Spectral triples plus some conditions depending on KO dimension. But I would like to stress that uh, what we've written down here, so this will be the replacement for the um, for the internal part. Um, and what I would like to say is that this is not a spectral triple because we have not a Hubert space here, and um, yeah, so this is. Um, so it's not a spectral triple, but what is it? It's um, uh, blah, blah. so let me make, put this as a remark. This is not a spectral triple. Um, but it is uh But it has some bimodule structure, namely from the left we have this action and of the algebra bundle, and on the right it's uh, C infinity M. Oh, let me call this bimodule. I mean, because uh, HF has some, uh, this bundle has some inner product, it's actually, uh, we also have a CM value in a product. So this is the. Um, This is basically the, um, yeah, the replacement of uh, the finite dimension of spectral triple. We replace it by uh, this part, or by this algebra bundle. Oh, yeah. So the I is some, uh, uh, it's a C infinity M linear and the morphism satisfying some conditions. Um, so it has, uh, so, so especially with respect to, to the grading and JI, it has some conditions, but it won't be important because it I will put it to. Uh, you cannot say this is a Morita equivalent. No, it's not a Morita equivalent. No, yeah, so it's not a Morita equivalent, by It's just, uh, it's just uh, that this X. Yeah. Yes, I will. <laughs> yes. This uh, this yeah. one yes that's. Uh, Sorry, this is not a. There is a magnetic space in the okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 So in the end, we will get a spectral triple. 
So this is only the space part, but yeah, so now it's not a spectral circle, but if, of course, sorry, this is the internal part. If we take uh, the space part, we combine it, we will get a spectral circle. I will get a spectral circle. Basically, this is um, the next uh, result I want to write down. Oh, GF, sorry, the action of GF on ATEX? Yes. Yes, so the, um, uh, so you have uh, the unitaries uh, act on S acting this way. On H, yeah. So we have this real structure, that, and then you get the, uh, yeah, the image is basically of this map is basically what we call the F. So let me. So let M be, uh, well, let me. Uh, so M is again a complex spin manifold, and uh, I infinity P is uh, again such a, a principal module. Then we can construct following space, so or this following triple, and this will actually be um, yes. So <coughs> oh, let me to simplify notation. I will denote this bundle, so this LCR bundle, by a, b a black board B. Whoops. And this bundle by a blackboard E, just for convenience. Otherwise, I keep writing down the these things as associated bundle. But so what we do, we take again the product of the space part. Um, but um, actually, we take now not the product over C, which was an external product, but we take now an internal product because we have to uh, because. We have not just the finite LCR, we have now the section here. So we, to, to get uh, spectral triple, we have to, uh, we can take, because this is a sin, a right sin infinity m module, we can take the internal <coughs> product of sin infinity m. And if you then take the, the, these uh, products for the algebra and the Hilbert spec, or for the, this part, you can just get back this, because, yeah, you take the, you take this algebra, you take the internal product over C infinity m with C infinity m, which just yields this algebra, and taking the product with these sections uh, with um, the uh, square integral sections of the of your uh, spinners, then spinner bundle, then you will just get this Hilbert space. Now for the um, for the Dirac operator, we still have we still have this part, but to make everything C infinity linear, we have to introduce, uh, we have to introduce a connection that also acts on, uh, on E. So, uh, NAPLA will be an emission connection on E. Well, you can add the, uh, if you'd like, you can add this. You can add this, and this will again be, uh, so we, so this is uh, the product that we take, so we just take the, the product of C infinity, mean C infinity M here, and here we, we had to add the connection to make sense of the uh, drug operator, and this is again, Spectral triple. And um, sorry? Um, yeah. 
Yeah, but the, the question is why we need the compactness of the manifold. Or so. Uh, yeah, um, we assume compactness just to get here the um, continuously um, work of compact man spin manifolds to get the. Um, so otherwise, you have to probably you have to work with smarter algebra here. But it's it's more or less a, I think a technical thing to do with uh, to get the idea. I think this. You don't have compact resolvent if you work with this algebra, and that's of what. What so? What's your question precisely? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um. <coughs> Okay, so this is the uh, so although the internal part is not uh, a spectral triple um, result, if we can take the tensor product over C infinity over C infinity m, we do get a spectral triple. Oh yeah, and what I would like to mention is that this um, this is what we so we've wrote in our paper we've written down a definition for an almost commutative manifold, which is slightly different from being just the space path product tensor product over C with a finite spectral triple, uh, and this one fits in that definition. It doesn't uh, so this is also what we would call an almost commutative manifold, and I should also mention here that. Uh, this also fits in the work of the definition of uh, Branimir charges in one of his papers. Um, oh, yeah, of course, here should still be the Clifford multiplication. Um, and actually, the way to interpret this uh, test products actually can be done in. Um, so if we can actually be done in uh, KK with KK uh, class of, of base of more, I should say, unbounded KK uh, theory, because this is a, an example of, uh, of, of an unbounded KK product in the following sense. So if we stick to um, so if we now look at So this, um, so this is the internal. So this is the principal module. But now, I replace the smooth section with the continuous sections, and you can actually show that this is an. Um, That this is an unbounded KK class of an unbounded uh, Kasparov module. Oops. And the space part, uh, so the space part. This one. Well, it's a spectral triple, so it's a, or at least a smooth part of spectral triple. So this is a non-bounded take of Kasparov module uh, from, yeah, 
uh, the C and the uh, Kas unbounded Kasparov module. And so if we call this M again, then you can do the same thing. And then uh, this is, uh, oops, this is also an unbounded KK class. And this is the, uh, is an unbounded curve product, product of IP and M. Oh, yes, of course. 